Hello and welcome back to my series about Titian's poesy paintings. In the next three videos I am going to talk about the sixth and the final work that Titian sent to Philip II of Spain. It's The Rape of Europa. Now all the way back when I was introducing this series I listed the works that I was going to talk about and Afterwards, I was chatting to a friend who had seen my first video and I said, oh, you know, what did you think? And they said, yeah, it was great. Apart from it was really weird when you said rape of Europa with this huge grin on your face. And I completely understood what they meant because the title of the painting conjures up completely horrific images that actually don't relate to the work that I have in my mind, which is actually rather comedic in many ways. By the way, Titian never called this work The Rape of Europa. He most commonly referred to it as Europa on the, on the Bull, which perhaps is a more accurate description because in many tellings of this Greek myth, Europa actually was quite willing. She was a willing accomplice, went willingly to her fate. Nonetheless, it is yet another rather unsavoury episode in the lives and affairs of Zeus, who does, with alarming regularity, as we know, behave like a complete sociopath. So, on that subject, I just want to mention that I don't think that in the long history of the telling of the Greek myths that anyone ever thought that the actions of Zeus and the other deities, for that matter, were okay. I think that, in fact, quite the opposite. I think that Zeus was the sort of poster boy for why ancient Greece absolutely should not have a supreme ruler. Because remember, ancient Greece was a democracy, albeit one that we wouldn't perhaps recognise as such today. So with that in mind, let's talk about the story of the rape of Europa or Europa and the, the bull, which, surprise, surprise, starts with the usual scene, there's a young girl that catches Zeus's eye. This time it's Europa, she's playing on the beach with her friends and Zeus is so taken with her that he requests that a, cow, a, a herd of royal cattle are brought down from the hillside to the beach so that he can disguise himself amongst the cattle and get close to Europa. So Ovid tells us that Zeus transforms into the most gorgeous bull. His fur is white. Um, Ovid says that it's white, sort of basically as pure as the driven snow, which is ironic, isn't it? But there is quite a lot of humour in, in Ovid as well. And he says that his horns were absolutely perfect and that this, this bull had this sort of demeanour, this look of peace and benevolence. Europa was extremely attracted to the bull. And she plucked up enough courage eventually to go and stroke it and then make garlands of flowers to place over these beautiful, perfect horns. And eventually she climbs on his back. She really does play with fire, this one. Ovid at this point gets quite animated as he's talking about um, Europa's thighs pressing against the, the, the flanks of the, the bull. But while she's doing so, the bull, Zeus, is edging further and further out to sea until all of a sudden he is airborne with Europa on his back and he carries her all the way across the sea to the island of Crete. Once they get to Crete, Zeus reveals himself to Europa 
presumably in more ways than one. And quite clearly Europa liked what she saw because she bore Zeus not one son, but in fact three sons and stayed on Crete for the rest of her life. She became the queen of Crete. She is then actually kind of quietly dropped from Ovid's Metamorphosis. She isn't really mentioned again, but of course she has great compensation in the fact that she has a whole continent named after her. So given Titian's propensity to find a pivotal moment within a story, there was really no other scene that he could commit to canvas for Philip II than this one with Europa on the back of the bull being carried across the sea to Crete. You will notice, however, that she isn't sitting astride the bull, but is in this exceptionally awkward pose, as though she was just maybe casually leaning against him when he suddenly took off, forcing her to lurch backwards and hang on for, for dear life. It's not, I don't think, an image that she's going to be particularly proud of. But if Titian had chosen to depict her sitting astride the bull, it would have been much more difficult for him to convey a sense of her surprise and perhaps fear because it would have looked as though she was riding it rather than being abducted. Which brings us back once again to this issue of power and agency and who has it and the fact that if you're anywhere near Zeus it's always going to be him that is in control. Except just have a look at the way that the bull is looking down at this little fish swimming alongside him. He looks absolutely terrified. I mean okay so the fish does have quite sharp teeth but I'm sure that's nothing Zeus can't take on. So in the second video about the Rape of Europa, we are going to continue to look at the ambiguities in the work that I've already alluded to here. Is it a comedy or is it a tragedy or is it both? Hope to see you then. Bye.